Um, if you take the first derivative, since we're going to take a first and second derivative, let's just keep the notation simple. Let's use y prime and y double prime. For, uh, for y prime, before I take that derivative, let's rewrite this function. We're going to raise our root, right? Got the root there, so the power is 1 half. Now if we find y prime, using the chain rule, bring the 1 half down. We keep our quantity the same, 5x squared minus 3. We adjust for our new power. Subtract 1 away from 1 half, get negative 1 half. And then we complete our chain here by tacking on the derivative of that quantity of 5x squared minus 3. So that derivative would be just 10x, right? And for our purposes so far, we've only taken first derivatives. We're just in the stages right now where we're getting used to all these rules. We've left this stuff in an unsimplified form. But now if we're going to take a second derivative, it would make sense to simplify the first to make it easier to take the second. So normally, first derivative, we stop there. But since we're taking a second, let's simplify. Since I'm simplifying first, it's still y prime. All right, let's start with this 1 half and this 10x since they're outside the parentheses. Let's multiply that together. If I multiply 1 half times 10x, I get 5x, right? And then you've got this quantity still, 5x squared minus 3 raised to the negative 1 half. This isn't completely simplified, but it is at a point where, you know, maybe you could use a product rule. You could take your derivative from here. That'd be okay. Um, but if I completely simplify it, I need to do something with this negative exponent. Right, that negative exponent's applied to this quantity right here. Meaning, I can now create a quotient where this 5x, not impacted by that negative exponent, stays on top. But the quantity that has the negative exponent gets bumped down to the bottom. So 5x squared minus 3. I'll raise that to a power of a positive 1 half now as I push that downstairs. That's completely simplified. So what I have right here, again, that's acceptable for a first derivative. And if this is a graded type of problem, you know, you've got your credit right there for the first derivative part. But we need to be able to simplify the first one so that it's easier to take the second one. So now let me take this first one, transfer it over. was it? It was 5x squared minus 3. All that to the 1 half. All right. If I transfer this over, now I want to take the second derivative. I've got a quotient that I'm working with. Make this y double prime to note that I'm taking the second derivative. Using my quotient rule. Quotient rule, we begin by taking the derivative of the numerator, so that's going to be 5. We multiply that to the denominator. We subtract the numerator unchanged times the derivative of the denominator. Now this should look familiar as I do this. You're bringing that 1 half down. You've got that quantity of 5x squared minus 3 that stays the same. Subtracting 1 away from the power, get negative 1 half. Tack on the derivative of the inside, that'd be 10x. That is all over, now what's the rule? It's the denominator squared, right? So take your denominator as is. It's 2 to the 1 half. Overall, you're squaring that. So technically, the powers cancel out. You've got 5x squared minus 3. But if I leave this completely unsimplified, I mean, that's fine. You don't have to simplify those exponents there. This is an acceptable answer for your second derivative, especially since we're not going any further. 